Good morning. This is Cynthia at Mountain Accents. Today I'm bringing my May Sewing Makes. And I've got four items to talk about. Actually, I'm going to talk about also um, a fifth item that I'm wearing. Um, so, yeah, stay tuned if you're interested in seeing what I got up to in May. I also want to thank all my new subscribers. Uh, I had several, I gained several this past month, and I appreciate all of you for joining in. And thank you to all those who have commented. And if you watched my last video, you know that I mentioned that I reached um, my one year anniversary, June 1st. I didn't realize it had been that long already. I've got, I think, 400 and around 430 subscribers now, maybe slightly over um, and I appreciate all of those that of you that have subscribed in this past year I am going to um, create a video talking about what I think as my pros and cons for creating content for this sewing channel if you have questions that you'd like to know about me or about my sewing journey feel free to pop them in the comments below and I will answer questions that um, I feel like I can give a truthful answer to and so yeah comment below I am going to start off with what I'm wearing so the top is my newest new make for May it is the closet core Cielo top and I made the short sleeve version but in the top so here is the line drawings and I made a size 14, which is for a bust 40 inch waist, 33 inch hip 42. Now my measurements are slightly different from that, but I looked at the finished measurements for the garment and decided to go with a 14 because I would grade, if I graded it would be between a 14 and 16. Sorry if you hear my neighbors sawing. Seems like every time you want to film, <laughs> there's noise. I already turned off my dryer because I thought it was making too much draw noise, but now I hear it, someone's chainsaw. But anyway, we'll see if we can go on anyway. I made a size 14, and I feel uh, good about that, the way it turned out. It's a boxy top, crop top, and I did make an adjustment when I was sewing it up, most of the seams are 5 8 inch, and I was a little concerned that it was going to come up too tight. And so at the last minute, I decided to sew the these side seams with just um, about a 3 8 inch seam to save, uh, to allow myself just a little bit extra wiggle room. And I'm, I'm glad I did that because I'm happy with the way it uh, fit. So this top has bust starts gives you an optional like facing or bias binding for the neckband and I chose to go with the facing and stitch it down um, even though this is a Japanese cotton fabric which is lightweight and I bought purchased it from Cloth Edit uh, Gabrielle at Cloth Edit in Australia and it, it's the first time I've ever used Japanese cotton and it's very delicate to work with but um, the reason I went with the facing versus the bias binding, even though the binding might have been a better option, is um, I'd ordered enough of this fabric in case I decided to do the dress. And because of how lightweight it is, I decided not to do the dress, just do the top. And I have enough fabric to do another top, but I didn't have, I wouldn't have enough fabric left over if I had used part of it for bias binding. So I opted to do the facing just because it would be less waste. And I'm happy the way that turned out. The only, I guess, part that was a little bit head scratching for me was this is the first time I've added a cuff like this to the to the armband. And so you, you uh, stitch it on and then you understitch that seam to your, if I remember correctly, to the, the cuff. 
no, maybe it's to the sleeve. You understitch it to the sleeve, and then you fold the, the cuff back up and stitch it down. And so I had to read through those instructions a couple of times just to make sure I was doing it right. And I, I, I just thought, well, I'm going to follow the process, do it step by step, because since I wasn't sure, and it, it turned out great. So this is a cute little top, and that is the Closet Core Cielo top. And I have paired it with, and I actually purchased this fabric with the intent of going with this next, with these shorts that I'm wearing. And I'm, the shorts I'm wearing are the Lander Pant Shorts by True Bias. And I have made two pairs of the shorts and one pair of the pants. And I'll, uh, and I'll, well, two pairs in linen and one pair in a cotton fabric that I really like. Now, on none of my pair, they have a patch pocket here at the front. I have not added the little, um, no, I'm drawing a blank on what you call these little um, belt loops. <laughs> I didn't add belt loops to mine, and I did not add back pockets. But I did do the front pockets, and I love the button front. And I also have made a, a size 14 in, uh, in this pattern. It's a great pattern. It is my favorite shorts pants pattern and I'm gonna step back so you can see maybe you can see this and I'll turn I don't know how well that'll show up but it's um, kind of in a darker I guess burgundy fuchsia color and this little top looks it's the first time I wore it but uh, I think they look great together and the only thing is I'm needing to get some um, better shoes because I don't have the right kind of sandals I think for this outfit so I need to go shoe shopping at some point in time <laughs> okay so let's move on to oh I was going to tell you something else about these shorts so I did make these early on in my sewing journey and I made a like a beginner goof uh, when I was making them so just uh, a reminder for if you're getting started out to check your stitch length because there are some places that you have to base some pieces together and I made the mistake of forgetting to change my stitch length back to a shorter length so when I washed these some of my seams came apart and fortunately I was able to quickly put it back together and restitch that and fix it. The inside doesn't look great because uh, I didn't have an overlocker at that time and uh, I had to like trim my seams up a little bit and um, just do a zigzag to try to fix the seam. So yeah, definitely check your stitch length if you're um, changing between stitch lengths in a garment. Next up, I made um, a pattern that is new to me, a company that's new to me. I have seen so many versions of the Ways and Wilds Heyday Dunkarees and every time I see someone wearing them I have I guess had a little bit of envy of like uh, you know <laughs> or FOMO <laughs> I um, decided I just oh they look so good on uh, every body that I've seen make them like no matter what their body shape is so I made the Waves and Wilds Heyday Dunkarees and with my, I made, well, let me find the drawing. So there's a couple of options as far as the, the ties at the top. You can, I'll show you here if it'll show up. Like a little loop and you and a tie through. Or you can do, um, belt buckles or buttons like a button I think I have seen um, someone make them with add-in belt buckles or you can do the little um, yeah button loop this version on the front she has tied and I think I see some other people are doing their yard work I, I hope it's not too disturbing and like this person here is wearing it also tied with a little tank top underneath and again on this one, um, with my body measurements where they currently are, 
my bust and waist should have put me more in the extra large but the hip would still put me in the large and I opted, opted to size down to a large um, just straight across and I am very happy with the, the fit on those and you know, I'm currently um, in the process of losing a little bit and I think that they'll be a little bit more comfortable as I lose some weight but they fit and I have uh, wore them out already and so let me show you my dungarees I made these dungarees in this gorgeous chambray, embroidered chambray that I received in one of my Think Pink subscription boxes. I have added a, a label. I think I ordered these from Amazon. It's just handmade with love to the pocket. I've got the, the little loop and the tie. And I did pretty good with um, cutting it out. I noticed um, I maybe should have played with my pattern placement a little bit better because on my side seams on the front there is a section here where I got more of just chambray without the embroidered effect but it, it matches on both sides and my sister tells me that it makes it look like that it was an intentional design and so, um, yeah, I, and I, I want to warm out. Um, yeah, I was happy with it. The the back seam I did well with matching, uh, getting them lined up well here. Um, I mean, it's not perfect, but I mean, it's pretty darn close. <laughs> and then on the front, um, I didn't realize that here, I'm not quite happy with the way that it looks here but because of the the angle of the pattern I don't know that I could have done any better than that um, so uh, yeah it's not a big deal and one thing about the hey daddy dungarees that they mentioned is they're made to cut to cuff up and when I first met them I thought well I wouldn't want to but then when I put them on I found that I like the way they look better with the, the hem turned up a couple of times and to, to wear them like that just with um, a white t-shirt underneath and I probably could wear a navy shirt underneath or, or even another color but I, I really liked it with the little white t-shirt and a pair of um, navy um, uh, strappy sandal just little casual sandals and I will insert a picture of me wearing this um, so I also made well, let me tell you a little bit about this next pattern. Back during the So Frugal Challenge, I watched, um, I tried to watch as many of the videos that people posted during that month of March. <laughs> I had to think about that for a minute. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> and uh, I saw, and I cannot remember who posted this pattern. And since then, when I was making it, I googled it, and I remembered seeing the Stitchy Wife, Elizabeth at the Stitchy Wife. I don't know how many of you have seen her channel, but she has some great videos out. And she has made this pattern, and I watched, I re-watched it, even though I had seen it when she first came out with it. And then I don't recall the other person that I, I just typed in. Let me show you the pattern. It's Paradise Patterns blow my tank and this is the the pattern it's just like a little almost racer back little knit top and uh yeah so I, I i just put it in my youtube search bar and searched for it and watched a couple of videos because i have never made a tank top where the no the neck band and the arm bands are attached the way it's attached in this pattern as far as the the basic construction of you know sewing at the the shoulders and the sides i did all that on my overlocker but this pattern stretched me as far as i learned some new skills and let me just grab it real quick like so this is 
my tank top and I had this piece of scrap art gallery jersey in my stash and so I decided I would try it and I believe I made let's see a size large on it and so the the new skill I learned is how to attach of course this armband and neckband and she has you first it's a wider piece and you lay it down <laughs> you lay it together with the right sides facing and you stitch it down and then you stitch another row of stitching before you fold it over and stitch it again and, and I think at that time I also folded it. I'm still not 100% sure if I did it right. I mean, that's how confused I was over attaching the neckband and the armband. But I'm thinking I must have done it right because it, it looks like the way hers is on her image. And it looks like the others, it's maybe a little wonky. But I mean, it's, I feel like for my first go, I did a pretty good job. And like I said, it's hard for me to explain the technique. But I did I did want to mention that one of the YouTubers I watched, she had surged it on, then did her row, the second row of stitching, instead of doing just stitching and stitching before folding it over. And then she used the, the um, surged edge as a guide when she was folding it and then top stitching. And so I opted to do it that way also. I used the my um, serger, searched it, and then did my next row of stitching and then folded it over and used that um, serge line as a guide for making sure I folded it in the right place and stitching it down. And the next thing that I did, which kind of scared me, and I didn't even have a twin needle, but I ordered a twin needle and it came and so I was going to use Mariflex thread, but I didn't have any that matched the color of the fabric. And so when I did the twin needle, I just used um, regular polyester thread. Did some practice twin needling. I have a Singer Quantum Stylus. And lucky for me, it does have a button for the twin needle. And there is a page in the little instruction booklet that tells you how to um, set your machine up to do twin needling. I didn't even know it was there, but... I thought, well, I'm going to pull out my manual, and I have also a little cheap singer that's manual, and I thought, well, surely one of the two of those machines would be able to do that twin needling, and yeah, my singer quantum stylus, it was easy to thread up. I didn't have but one spool of that color of thread, so what I ended up doing was uh, creating like an extra bobbin and using one of those for the thread at the top, and then the actual spool for my second spool to run through the two needles and then of course the bobbin in the bottom. Did my practice ones uh, and very happy with the way the twin needling turned out and I decided that it is not as scary as what I had imagined it in my head. Imagine that. <laughs> and I think I'm finding that true with a lot of things that I have tried since I've started sewing is that there's a lot of things that are not as scary once you sit down and read the instructions or try to play around and try to figure it out, they're not as scary. <laughs> so, yeah, that was a win. And uh, I anticipate wearing that more as a, like, workout top. But it actually goes with these little shorts, too, if I did decide to want to wear it with this. Or I could probably wear it with just, like, jean shorts. And I did have enough of that fabric left over that I tried the... Tilly and the Buttons and Ivy Louvre Le Iris knickers. Um, I'm debating on whether to purchase this pattern, but I've seen a lot of people doing it. I have tried the acacia ones, and um, they don't fit me that well. They're not as high rise as I like them. And with these, it gives you the option of, like you have, like a low rise mid rise high rise and then you also have different options for like uh, high cut bikini cut 
or I have, maybe I'm doing it wrong, high cut, mid cut, uh, and then like the boy short. And I personally like either a high cut or a boy short, but I'm not a big fan of the the mid one because it, it just seems to cut my thighs at, or hips and thighs at the wrong place. So I wasn't sure about the, the rise, and I, I, don't, I didn't bring them out here to show you. You don't need to see my, my underwear. So <laughs> anyway, I did make them out of that fabric, and I had um, some knicker elastic that I received. I believe it came in the Beyond the Pink Door advent calendar box. I think where I got it from. It might have been in one of the Think Pink subscription boxes that matched this... Uh, lavender color uh, if you can see this little lavender color it kind of matched that and so i used it for the the legs and the waist and because i wasn't sure in the instructions it has you um want you to leave one side open but because i wanted to check the rise i opted to sew both sides up try them on and then i pinned it where I wanted the top part to be on the front and where I wanted the back to be on the back. And because I do have a little bit of a tummy, I end up like removing just a little bit from the top of the the front, but removing a lot from the back. And then of course it, it kind of, I guess, scooped and ang I had it to where it angled to where it actually sits more, I guess, closer to my belly button or just under the belly button. And yeah, I, so I'm very happy with that rise and I still gotta make that uh, adjustment on my pattern piece. And then I did the, the high cut and I found that it was, the back is, or the front is just right, but the back does not give quite enough coverage. So I'm gonna have to adjust that back pattern piece on that one for that high cut. And I do want to try the the boy short one, but I'm going to keep, I'm going to make the same adjustments as I did for the, 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 the um, crotch rise on that pattern piece when I get ready to make, make a pair of the boy shorts. So yeah, I've had a pretty productive May. I was feeling a little down, I guess, back in March and April, I just didn't have the sojo or the, felt like I didn't have a lot of sewing time. I had a lot of issues going on with like work and home and like extended family um, health issues and different things that was distracting me. And so I felt like May was um, a little bit more productive and hopefully uh, June's gonna be productive. So far I haven't sewn anything, but I have got something cut out ready to start. And I'm also um, taking part in the Sew so Confident CCC um, sewing a workshop. I haven't received my package yet. Um, there's a little, been a little bit delay of getting it to the United States, and I think the my classes start this week. So hopefully I'll get it before the class starts. If not, I'll join in when when it does get here. So I'll keep you posted on how that's going. And I will um, come to you again soon, telling you about my pros and cons for sewing, um, the sewing YouTube channel, what I think works, and the parts that concerns me, and yeah, just give you a little bit about my thoughts. And if you have questions, remember, comment below. If you do not subscribe to my channel, but you do watch it, I'd love it if you subscribe. And if you liked what you've seen, please click like and have a wonderful day. Bye.